What's going on you guys? Welcome back to another video. I'm kind of excited for this video, but part of me isn't because there's going to be a lot of mayhem and a lot of mess going on in this video. You guys already know by, you know, seeing the title. We are working on the wiring harness for the S54 E30. I'm going to try to be as detailed I can in this video. Obviously, this video is going to be filmed over like a couple days. I'm going to try to do this video in two parts. So I'm going to try to have a part one and a part two. Hopefully it's not going to be a three part video. I'm going to try to keep it down in two parts, but I'm going to also try to keep like enough information for you guys out there. So if you guys are doing this swap, you can watch this video and learn a lot from me because I was looking on the forums and there's not that much information out there. Like I have a print up, but this is for a E46 harness with a manual transmission. I have a SMG harness and I found some pinouts and everything to do and this is the C101 plug and everything, but there just isn't a good page. Like for example, when I did my engine swap for my M52, when I had an M52 in this car, this is for the good old days. When I had my M52 and I went to do the wiring, it was super simple. Obviously there's gonna be more wiring in this because it's you know more intensive and everything. But quick thing, I, I don't know what the fuck happened. I got like, it's like this like weird like rash or something on my eyes and they're all like all puffy. So if it looks like I'm like about to fall asleep, it's because of my eyes. They're, it's all weird and it's they're all itchy. It's really annoying. Should probably go get that checked out. On another note, let me walk you through what I have going on here. So this is my GME. This has been already tuned. Now that I know local in Pittsburgh does it, uh, I think Nate's BMW shop or I know, I know his name is Nate. He tuned this for me. This has the rear O2s taken out, all that stuff. The EWS, all that is deleted. One of the most important things for this, this is a C101 plug I went through. And this is actually the C101 plug that was for my harness. That's a harness that came off of my M52. This is the C101 plug adapter and that basically plugs into there. This is the plug that's gonna take everything into like all the information for your gauge cluster, your RPM signal, your fuel consumption signal, like oil pressure, all that stuff into your gauge cluster. So this is actually super simple. I have everything gone through and labeled. There are only 18 wires that you need to go through and label. I'm gonna say this at the beginning of the video. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, feel free to shoot me a DM on Instagram right here and shoot me a DM on Instagram. I'll try to talk to you guys. If you guys have any questions that I can maybe answer for you, shoot me a DM on my Instagram. I will always respond to you guys. Feel free, it's not a big deal. Going on to the wires. So this is the E46 M3 DME. One of the nice things about the E46 M3 DME, it's actually in two parts. So if you guys see like this big part right here, this will separate from the main engine harness. So this I'm gonna call like for now, like the jumper harness, because this has all of the SMG plugs into, like that plugs into the computer for the SMG. It has the front O2s, we need the front O2s. We are not using the rear O2s. Most of this will be getting cut out. This is the main section of the harness. If you guys can see, this will bolt under the intake plenum. This connector is the OOX3 connector that goes into the DME right here. So we do have to take some wires out of here. We'll go into that later. But that's a super nice thing about this. You can basically put this harness onto the car and then get everything like plugged in, plugged in all to your sensors, you know, your starter, all that stuff. Once that's all in, you can go in with your, I'm gonna call that the jumper harness. You can go into your jumper harness, basically go through that, cut everything out, and that's gonna be where you're gonna be splicing in a lot of your wires going to the C101. That being said, guys, this harness is dirty as fuck. Like, look how grimy that is. We're gonna start off with that, and then what I'm probably going to do is I'm gonna actually lay the harness onto the engine and get most of everything plugged in. We can start going through and connecting stuff to the C101. So let's just get to it. So before I go ahead and throw the harness in this car, I'm just gonna like wipe it down real quick because it's super dirty.
Now we are going to start to put the harness onto the engine. I just had the air box sitting on there. I also just had this thing sitting on here. This is the, this is like what eventually we're gonna wrap all the wiring in because it's like this beauty cover. This is actually off of a E30 M3. So if you guys are wondering, it's actually an OEM BMW part for an E30 M3 and it will go on your regular E30 just like normal. All right, so now I have this abomination of wiring. So now we're gonna figure out where the hell this is all gonna go. I'm gonna start by putting the fuel injector rail on because I think once that's on, I'll kind of get like a good there. Then this will plug into the throttle position sensor just like that. What I'm coming to find out is this will bolt on right here, so I'm actually gonna be keeping this intact. You can start to figure out where everything goes, and you can see like the spots where this thing bolts down. All right guys, so I have the main like engine harness on the engine. You can see most of everything's plugged in. I got all the knock sensors plugged in, throttle actuator plugged in, you know, crank positioning sensor. All that basic stuff is plugged in. We're gonna actually move on to the wiring side of things. So, so this is gonna be the main part of the engine harness that we're actually gonna have to cut and modify. Now I set a towel down on my, now I set a towel down on this side of the engine bay because we just, you know, painted this engine bay and I don't wanna scratch my shit up. I cut these rubber grommets away. You aren't gonna be needing any of these anymore because this is for the stock E46 M3 and I cut this plastic piece off. You have to like cut down around there so you can get the math out. So there are a few wires that we are gonna have to end up cutting out of here. This, we can actually take this connector off. We aren't gonna be needing. This has the, like the 12 volt signal for the alternator and then one, I think this black one is the starter signal wire. But basically what I'm gonna do before I actually go ahead and start cutting everything up and splicing and soldering these wires, I'm gonna use a multimeter to make sure the schematic actually says what the wires are doing. Set your multimeter to ohms or like, you know, so it can read the continuity. And so it can tell you if it's a closed circuit or it's an open circuit. So real quick guys, I just found this, like this write up online. I'll actually put this down in the description if you guys are interested. This actually has all the pinouts for the DME. We are going to be focusing right now on the 003 connector, which I think it tells you, yeah, 13 is the signal terminal 16 for the alternator. And that's the, we come over on the C101 plug. Number one is the charge light for the gauge cluster. So this is number one. They're actually both blue wires. So those two wires will eventually connect to each other. As you can see, this is gonna be extremely time consuming and really tedious, which is why this is gonna be in two videos. Basically, you're just going through everything and figuring out what wires do what, and then come over to the C101 plug, and then you figure out if there's an area that you plug it into, then if there is, you wire it into the C101. All right, guys, so I have the voltmeter out. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to tackle this connector and this connector. So this black wire is a starter signal wire. Black wire is the same as this wire that goes right down to there. Basically how you check it guys, you turn your voltmeter on to check and see if there's like continuity. There, it says open lead. If I go ahead and hold these together, it shows, it shows that they're closed out. So like there's no electricity going on, you know, like it shows that it's closed. Now if I take them apart, now it shows that they're open. So basically, I'll use this black wire for demonstration. I'm gonna put one of the prongs, it doesn't matter which one, down in there. And then I'm going to go down here. Sorry, I'm doing this with one hand. And then there, open lead, and then close lead. So that's how you figure out what wires do what. We are going to go ahead and cut this off and then we're going to take the brown and green wire out and then the black wire out and then we're gonna label them. But I'm gonna grab some scotch bright tape and a Sharpie and we're gonna write on the wire. So I just wrote on the wire start signal and then this one, we're gonna write 12, the 12 volt constant alternator. That's how we know what these do. For the next ones we're gonna be working with here, we're gonna be working in the, I think this is the OOX connector. This will house our alternator charging wire and then this will also house our oil pressure wire. So 
when that gets triggered by the DME, basically that just says, hey, your alternator isn't charging, then it flashes a light on your gauge cluster. And then same thing for the oil pressure. If your oil pressure drops too low, it flashes a light on the gauge cluster. In the OOX connector, if you guys can see, there's actually two connectors within the connector. So you kind of just like, you kind of just like peel that back, if you can see, and then this gray piece right there will come out. So if we do the same as before, I can go ahead and test these wires and before I cut them, I can make sure they're gonna work. So I just double check those pinouts, those pinouts are correct. So I'm going to now cut them out. So the blue one's gonna be alternator signal and then the green and brown one is gonna be oil pressure. Basically we're done here. We have all the wires pulled out of here that we're gonna need for the gauge cluster. And then this will just plug into our DME like normal. And then these will go into our C101 plugs that will plug into this connector on the E30 chassis. We're tackling this like jumper harness right now. So we're gonna be cutting out the rear O2s and everything that we don't need. I just took this box off because we aren't gonna be needing it. Now this is for the O2s. The shorter O2s are the primary O2s because they're closer up. These real long ones are for the secondary O2s because they go farther down along the car. And then this is for the exhaust gas temperature sensor. There are the rear O2s, gone. Now I still have these wires. I'm gonna go through and trace these wires all the way back and take them out. What I'm trying to figure out right now, this is the uh, DME X6004. Problem that I'm having right now, this wiring diagram that I found on it, so far everything's been correct except for the 0004 because it says pin one, Pin one, which would be right there. I have this pulled out. That normally slides into there. It says pin one is the signal for the alternator, but pin one isn't there. That's supposed to be pin one and there's no wire going to it. So I don't know if I should trust everything else because pin one is wrong. On this sheet, it wants me to use pin one as the, the charging light, which I'm pulling from this so i guess it doesn't really matter but i'm just confused because all of this other information means that it's wrong if pin one is off which, which there is no pin in pin one so that's what's throwing me off so it's like i'm thinking okay now that there's not a wire in pin one then all the other wires that this is telling me isn't probably it's probably not correct for my car so I'm kind of stuck right here. I'm gonna put the camera down for a couple seconds and I'm gonna try to figure this out. And I'll come back to you guys on a word on that. All right guys, this is a couple hours later. I think I figured out the problem that I was having. I am on this like mform.com. So they're going over the electrical for the wiring for an S54 E30. It says, if you have an, if you have an SMG S54 harness, which I do, there are two gray connectors that are physically able to connect to the DME. This is not correct. This gray connector, I originally thought this was, I originally thought this was the X60004 DME connector. This connector will actually physically plug into the DME just like that. That explains why it was throwing me off on all my pinouts because I'm like, why are all these pinouts wrong? And I figured that out because this isn't even supposed to be connected to the DME. This goes into the SMG computer. All right, what's up guys? This is the next day later. So I did run into a few things and now we are going to have a little bit of change of plans. I went on the computer last night and I was looking into the rest of the stuff that I need to buy for the harness. I need to buy like the OBD2 port, wires for the gas pedal and the gas pedal connector and all that stuff. I do want to get a new C101 plug because I've already been here before with my other swap and this, this connector is a little bit messed up and I would just like to get a new one. But so I would have to source all those connectors and all those parts and get all that. And it actually wasn't for all that stuff. It actually wasn't that cheap. Somebody did reach out to me saying that they make a adapter harness for this car. So I actually ended up going with them. His name is Andrew Harvey. He makes, I guess he makes swap like E30 S54 swap adapters and all that stuff. So I'm gonna be working with him on that. So super excited that he's gonna be on this project. And I don't wanna say this is me being like, oh, like I don't wanna do the wiring or like me giving up on the wiring. It's just, 
I had to go and buy so much other shit for it where if I buy his jumper harness instead of making my own, he already has everything and it literally wasn't that much more expensive. That being said, what I'm going to do now is we're going to focus on the main engine harness. Now, like I talked about it before, this thing has to get into the glove box because that's where I'm going to be mounting the DME. On this plastic box, this group of wires comes out over here. And I want to modify this plastic box so this group of wires is coming out over here. So then it can go into the DME box. So I have the engine harness off of the engine. You guys can see this is the back that sits towards the engine. And this is where all these wires come out. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to open up this box and then flip this 180 degrees around. So instead of these wires facing this way, they're gonna be facing that way towards the back of the engine and towards the glove box. This basically has a bunch of tabs on it that you're gonna lift up and then this box will be able to separate. Oh, I'm in the box. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna try to get down and like shove this grommet out of the way. So just like that, now we have this flipped around. Now this should reach our glove box with ease. Now I'm going to throw the harness back on. Now I have the harness back on the car and now this thing is flipped around 180 degrees. So instead of coming out right here, it comes out back there. What I just did so I could get it to fit better, I actually cut this plastic thing out off of the wiring. So I know it's just exposed wires right now and that will change. I'm gonna get some Tessa tape and some actual custom sheathing. But now you guys can see this will slip down in between the throttle actuator and the starter. This should slide down around the back side of the engine like that. And now this section will be able to go into the glove box just like that, like we need. That being said, I think we're gonna end it here, but I know this video isn't gonna be the best of videos, but that, like I always say, like I wanna stay on top of keeping content flowing out. Just so, you know, when I'm at the point of I'm producing like a level one quality goodness content, I'm just gonna be able to keep on posting it and posting it, posting it, and I'm, Every single video I'm learning so much in editing. But that's the gist of things. We did get the engine harness on, everything. We got all the wires in the engine harness figured out. But for the jumper harness, we are going to be working with that Harvey racing guy. I think Andrew Harvey, I'll, I'll put the link in the description. The next video, we're gonna shoot to have the brakes, clutch, and cooling system completed. And then at that point, the only other thing that we're gonna need is harness, which my end of the harness is figured out and it's ready to go and I'm just waiting for Andrew to send me over that adapter. Then fueling, which that reminds me, I have to buy a E46 M3 fuel pressure regulator. Jude or Brandon weren't here in this video. A Jude got sick, RIP. But don't worry, next video on Wednesday, Jude and Brandon will be back here filming with us. That being said, guys, I'm gonna close the video out right here. Dream so big it's scary. Peace out, and we'll catch you in the next one. Boom.